Hi and welcome to this State of the Union of Martial Arts Address 2015. Well, what a year 2014 was. I'm not going to go on about that. I'm going to make my predictions for 2015 so you can understand what I think will happen within the martial arts. I'm going to have a look at martial arts from different points of view and also how self-defense is incorporated into that. First of all, traditional martial arts. Still, by far, the biggest aspect of martial arts training. And it will continue to be so, and hopefully will continue to grow. There is a huge problem within traditional martial arts. A huge problem. And that is depth of knowledge and depth of understanding. Too many traditional martial arts perform their basics, their kata patterns, forms, and then their fighting side, the kumite side. And they perform them as three separate arts. If you're from a traditional background or you actually do a traditional martial art now, you will understand exactly what I mean. When you do your basics, you do them one way. When you do your uh, kata, you do it a different way, and when you fight, it looks nothing like the basics and nothing like the kata. So many of the moves obviously have similarities, but in application, they're nothing like each other. And that is the problem. And that problem is getting worse and worse and worse. And I've seen it over the last sort of like 10, 15 years really, 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 really get worse. And that's due to a lack of understanding and a lack of depth of knowledge, which we can address in 2015 for you. When we look at combat sports, we've seen the evolution of MMA. You know, the UFC is getting bigger and bigger and bigger, which is fantastic. It's you know, my favorite combat sport now after boxing. Boxing is in decline, unfortunately. They don't handle things correctly, but that's another story. But when we look at mixed martial arts, that's beginning to fall into the same trap as the traditional arts have fallen into. They're beginning to just learn things in a certain way because that's how it should be done, because that's how we've always done it. Doesn't mean it's right, it just means that's how it's always been done. You see fighters going to a boxing coach to learn boxing, to a Thai boxing coach to learn Thai, to a BJJ or a Jiu Jitsu guy to learn the Jiu Jitsu, a wrestling coach for wrestling, etc, etc, etc. They've got lots of different coaches, all with their own ideas and interpretations of how things should be done. And then when you see them in the octagon, or the ring, or whatever, their techniques are nothing like the ones that they've been learning in those individual systems. They're not putting it all together. They're not making it a complete system, a complete way of doing things. Why? Because that's the way it's always been done. And you can trace that back in every combat sport and you can also trace that back in the traditional martial arts. So those things will either A, continue to get worse or somebody will come along and go, hold on a minute, let's look at this a little bit better. Let's try and improve this. Let's try and make things much more efficient than they've been before. That, of course, is our aim. When we look at self-defense, you know, I don't see many changes coming here. There's always going to be a self-defense guy pop up with a new, improved system that's basically the same system as before. Um, no real new ideas, new approaches. You know, there is no saying there's nothing new under the sun. That's, that's probably true in this situation. But what is new, what is different, is being able to understand how and why things work and then be able to apply them, teach them and make sure that the students can understand. Now my job as a coach is to pass on as much information as possible in the most efficient manner so that you can pick it up and understand it, learn it, apply it and then pass it on to others. It doesn't matter if I can fight or not. What can, matters is if, can I give you that information? 
I'm not saying I'm a great fighter. I can handle myself. I can box pretty good. And if it comes to it, I can do what I need to do. But, like anything, there's always somebody better. And you can always get caught blindsided. Anything can happen to anybody at any time, especially in a self-defense situation. Nothing is absolute. All you can do is make things as good as they can possibly be to give you the best possible chance that you can get. But you still need that little switch at the back of your head to turn on and go ballistic. And that's some of the problems, this switch, go ballistic, how you apply techniques that make the difference between art, sport, combat sport, self-defense and a real life or death situation. Now I stole this phrase from Peter Considine years ago and I like to make out he stole it from me before I was born because he's that old. Sorry Peter. But you've got to do things like this. Think of it this way. And Peter explained it great. If you put little pigeonholes for all your techniques, everything that you know, and some will be purely for the art. Some will be purely for kata, kumite. Some will be purely for self-defense. Some will be purely for combat sports. Now, obviously, there is some crossover. You know, a right hook can be used in many things. So you've got to use some kind of common sense with this and put these techniques into the right pigeonhole. Then, what you need to do is to understand and analyze these techniques. How and why do they work? Let's take a simple left hook. I say simple, it's not that simple, but everybody understands what a left hook is. And you see people in boxing get knocked out with left hooks all the time. That is then proof that a left hook works. Yes, it is. But we're missing the point here. We're just saying a good left hook will, will win. A good left hook will knock somebody out. Yes, it will. But, here's the rub. How many times do you see somebody get hit with a left hook and they just take it and carry on fighting? How many times do you see somebody get hit with a left hook, they ignore it and bang the other guy out? So what we tend to do is we tend to look at the times that it works and then say, here, that's proof. That technique's great. So we'll keep training it that way because here's the proof that it worked. That's not the way to do it. The way to do it is look at those times that it worked and analyze exactly how and why it worked so that you can replicate it so that it becomes unusual for the knockout not to occur. That's easily said in theory. Obviously the practice is very different when somebody's trying to take your head off. But I'm sure you'll understand my meaning behind that. You just don't throw a left hook and hope that it connects to the head. You've got to have all things in place. Your feet has got to be right, your balance, your positioning, your angle towards the opponent, the way you throw the shot. What sort of angle were they at at you when it landed? Did you throw it with more like a blunt trauma boom? Or did you throw it bam so you put your shock into the system? What angle and direction did that punch take? Whereabouts did it hit them on the head? What was the intent of the person throwing the punch? What was their mindset? All of these things need to be analysed. You need to break that technique down and work out exactly how and why it happened. And then, those principles that you've taken, you can apply it to everything else that you do. Thereby improving every single technique. Now I've mentioned before things like getting your feet in the right place and all that sort of stuff. One of the biggest problems I see when I go to teach all over the world, if it's a, doesn't matter if it's combat sports, doesn't matter if it's traditional martial arts, boxing, whatever it is, you say to people, what, what's your fighting stance for want of a better way of putting it? Even though I'm not a big advocate of stances per se. And they'll show the stance relative to their opponent. Or, in some cases, they'll say, you know, with no opponent, here's my stance, and I'll ask where their opponent is, and they point to a place in the air. And yes, aesthetically, the stance may be absolutely beautiful, perfect, wonderful, but it's perfect for an opponent that's here, 
and they're using their stance for an opponent that's over here. The angulation is wrong. And you see that so often. And this is one of the things that we try to get across to people that it's not about the aesthetics. It's not about how it looks. It's about how it works. And this is one of the great problems that's built up in traditional arts over the years. It's all about aesthetics rather than function. It's form over design, so to speak. And this is one of the things that we hope we can change in 2015. Let's get away from aesthetics. Let's get away from looking great. And let's just get back to how it should be, which is functional and working in the most efficient and timely manner. That's what we should strive to be doing with our martial arts. And if we can do that, we're going to improve the martial arts immeasurably because we can immediately pass that information on to our students. If you think, if you're a school owner and you've got a huge school, four, five, six, seven, eight hundred students, how many lives are you actually influencing? In the course of your school, thousands and thousands and thousands of lives. And that's thousands and thousands and thousands of people that deserve to have correct information that deserve to have the information needed to help defend themselves and their loved ones. That is what we should be striving to do, to pass on this information in the best possible way. And that, my friend, is what we will be doing throughout 2015. I promise you that we're going to be giving you a ton more information, lots of ways to help improve so that you can improve and most importantly, you can help other people improve. And we're going to find the best ways of giving you that information and teaching you that information. Anyway, enough of a rant. Have a great 2015. See you soon.